Mills and KT running shotgun. Great call from Tony, that was. Mex, Murray Mex did, joins Arsenal. All the controversy aside, Mex. What a hell of a game of rugby that was. Yeah, wasn't it great, eh? It had everything, didn't it? You know, it was entertainment personified. Had great tries and full of drama. I mean, it had everything that anyone could ever dream of, really. And suspense as well, and winning in the, you know, in, in overtime. I mean, it was an extraordinary match, really. Max, there's so many aspects to it, though. Did we make it so hard for ourselves and too hard? We started off like a rocket, let them back into the game. We had a 31-13 lead. We let them back into the game again. Uh, these are worrying things for the All Blacks, aren't they? When, you know, our, the kind of tradition that we have is when we get those leads, we shut a game down. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, well, you know, my view on this might be a little bit biased, but history will tell you that the team with the best loose forward combination will rule the rugby world. You'd have to say in the last, what is it, nine matches... You know, we've been inconsistent. One week we'd be really good, next week poor. Good, poor, good, poor. Right throughout that Irish series, the Springbok series, and now with the Wallabies. So we've got a major issue in the loose forwards, haven't we? And every time they name the loose forward trio, it's different. I mean, when I um, spoke to you many weeks ago, I think it was during the um, Irish series, um, I spoke about three areas of the game that I thought we had problems and needed to be addressed. The, the, front, the first one was the front row, the second one was the loose forwards, and the third one was the midfield backs. And those other areas, like the locks and the outside backs and the inside backs, you know, we're world class. So we have to address those three areas. Well, I think, you know, Jason Ryan has done that with the front row. I mean, the front row is looking quite stable. Um, now and very competitive and they'll just get better and better because they're a young front row Agreed. and they'll get better and better yep. you know, if they played consistently towards the Rugby World Cup that leads, leads the loose forwards and the midfield backs and I think we've had an enormous number of injuries in the midfield backs which, which does contribute to um, you know lack of combinations and things, yeah. Yeah. yeah lack of combinations I mean you know, Ma Nonu and Conrad Smith, you know, I mean, they were just so wonder, wonderfully balanced as a midfield combination. They seem to play test after test after test, um, you know, and you've got a real stability and you've got try-scoring wingers when you've got that sort of centre combination. But my worry, and I say bias because I was a loose forward, and, of course, I spend my life um, coaching and trying to develop loose forwards, um, and it appears to me that if you've got a really good loose forward trio, you can you can win the game even if you're you're short of players in other positions. Um, and that, that's over a great many years I've formed that opinion. And if you've got a consistent selection, you get a consistent result. I mean, that, the role of the loose forwards within a team is to retain possession or regain possession. If you haven't got the ball, you can't win a game of rugby yep. very often. Exactly. And you don't even have to win set play if you just want to win it back at the breakdown. Um, so, you know, I'm a, a great fan of a consistent and good loose forward trio. And that, I think, is our number one problem. I mean, we score great tries. We're playing really well in set play. Um in defence, we're abysmal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another another adage that coaches use is that, um, you know, if, you, if the opposition is scoring tries against you, it means your loose forwards aren't pulling off a number, enough tackles or your loose forwards aren't engaged in the game. Um, so there's a lot of coaches that actually do believe that that's an integral part of, of performance. Um, and, I, and I do too. I think it's a connection between forwards and backs. And if your loose forwards are and putting pressure on the ball, irrespective of where where it is, and irrespective of which team has it, you know, then it's going to be a tight game. And if your if your three are, go, are going well together, the combinations are nicely balanced, then the team is bloody hard to beat. 
Well, we don't have that, do we? Well, losing yeah, the captain didn't important. help, though, Mix, did it? Murray Mix did the Irons inside. Losing Sam didn't help, so we had to rearrange that combination again. And that was a new combination, remember, with, with uh, Satutu coming in without Artie there as well. So, But it's a new combination every week. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's my point here. Um, and when you look at the last three Rugby World Cups, you know, the loose forward trio uh, in the All Blacks in 2011 and 2015, um, you know, it was McCaw, Reed, and Kana. Yeah, brilliant. You know, and they played almost every game all the way through those, you know, those... Intervening years. Decade, yeah, they really. did. Yeah. And, you know, in the last Rugby World Cup, 2019, you'd have to say um, that Khaleesi, Tatoi, and Vermeulen were absolutely outstanding yeah, they were. and so balanced. And, you know, it's no coincidence the captain of those... World Cup winning teams as an open side flanker. The last three Rugby World Cups. McCaw, McCaw and Khaleesi. You know, and when I, when I talk about a balanced combination, Martin, I'm talking about leadership as well. And leadership uh, off the field is, is, is as significant as it is on the field when, when you've got a uh, a victorious team. So if we want to win Rugby World Cup, bottom line is we have to find a very balanced loose full trio and play them almost to the end of to every game till the Rugby World Cup. Till they get the combination. Won't win the Rugby yeah. World Cup. Mix, we you know, won't win that cup. can I, you know, Murray Mix did this with us. That frustration, when, when we were 31 13 up, and look, I mean, you can point to a forward pass or whatever, but I mean, we did miss tackles. I mean, Foley ran straight through Satutu and Toki Aha, and then and then Bowden Barrett and Will Jordan missed tackles for that second try. Are you sitting there looking at the tally, tally going, how the hell are we not controlling this game? Why aren't we up their end? Why aren't we just playing for territory? Why aren't we doing the most basic test rugby things? It seems to me we're still locked in this super rugby headspace where we think we've got to score another 20 points. We've already scored the points. Win the goddamn game. Yeah, no, I didn't find myself saying that, actually, to okay. tell you the truth. I found myself looking at Dave Rennie's face um, when we were up by that enormous score. And I, 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 I know Dave Rennie very well because he worked with us at Irons for about six or seven years as the head coach. And he is a very, very um, savvy... Savvy is a, a gentle word, isn't it? Um, he's a cunning... He's a cunning coach and selector. And I think what the Wallabies showed last night was incredible character and tenacity. And when it comes to the Rugby World Cup, they are going to be competitive. There is no doubt about that. They will be hard to beat. They beat us in the loose forwards. So when we were up for that score, I thought, even though we're getting dicked in the loose forwards here, we're going to win this game quite comfortably. What a relief. But when you're playing against the best teams... It exposes limitations. You know, you've got to have a complete side. And if you're going to want to win the Rugby World Cup or you want to be ranked one or two in the world, which we're not at the moment, you know, you've, you've got to be consistent and you've got to be competitive. And that Rugby World Cup is going to be a cracker because the Wallabies will rule one side of that core. And we'll be playing it out with the Springboks and the Irish. Is it the Irish? The no, I think they, no, they, get, they get the English, don't they? I think, no, hang on, we get, I think we get the Springboks, Ireland and France on our side. So they must get England. And that's it. There's only England and the Wild. Yeah, OK, the yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. So we've got, yeah, we've got the hardest side of the draw. So we need to sort this loose full tree out right now. But, you know, I was worried, always worried because... Every time we moved the ball last night, and it wasn't anywhere near as many times as the old book, they, they were breaking the line. And they ended up scoring, one, one stage, I think it was four tries, to, four tries to one, I think it was. Um, you know, we ended up with equal, I think we might have scored five tries to four in the end. But the bottom line is, when they had the ball and they moved it, they were breaking tackles, yep. making holes, scoring tries. Um, and I blame um, the combination, the loose forward combination, um, because if you've got a good, tight loose forward combination that's put in pressure, it, it covers weaknesses and limitations. And we, you know, we've had a hell of a battle, haven't we, in the, in the midfield backs uh, with injuries. You know, we've had players 
going, um, getting injured. All look at look at um, a good Hugh, uh, Leonard Brown, uh, and then last night. Um, Tupia uh, goes off, so Sam goes there. off. Yeah. Hey, but that's rugby, mate, and you know that, and you know that in a year's time, we don't know who's available for the Rugby World Cup. I mean, and Nas Borta said that to us a few weeks ago. He says, Martin, he says, you know, Rugby World Cup is seven isolated weeks. You you can't prepare for that a year out. I thought he was right when he said that. Yeah. So okay. So that's so to avoid that, what we have to do is sort out our loose forwards and our field backs. And I guess. Um, you know, we need to we need to pick six loose forwards and four midfield backs, and not play anyone else but those six and those four throughout throughout the next. How many games are there to the rugby world? Are, I'm not sure. Well, we got right it, to the quarterfinals. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got, we've got this year. I think we've got another five, and then next year I think we have four or five, and and that's it. Because next year is a truncated rugby championship. So yeah, we don't have that many games. That's the point, isn't it? No, and then you get another three, don't you? Because yep. we're going to be playing in the quarterfinals. Yep. We'll yep. be in the quarterfinals. For sure. After that, nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. So we need six loose forwards and four midfield backs, and stick with that. And we will sort out who the who the the, the best three combinations and the best two combinations. And then go and from we'll be there. Bloody competitive in the Rugby World Cup. And if we don't do that, we won't win it. I'll tell you my loose forwards. I've been thinking about it after last night because I'm. It was just such a fantastic game. I was exi- it was exhilarating to watch, but it really did expose um, limitations. So I would I would my two open side flankers would be Kane and Savia. So I reckon Kane and Savia are the two best open side flankers, and it's a country mile to the next one because um, there's no one in the squad that plays like an open side flanker apart from Kane and Savia. In fact. Tom Christie would have to be the number three yeah, probably right. in the country. So I'd have to take Kane and Sevilla. Um, my number eight will probably surprise everybody. But my number eights I'd be looking at now would be Papa Lee and Jacobson. Okay. And my, and my blindside flankers would be Barrett and Frizzell. Now, if the All Black selectors who don't have a loose forward in their selection group, they have a, they have a, a front row forward in their and, uh, who's who's selected a really strong front row forward going forward, haven't they? But haven't got a loose forward selector. But if they pick those six, they'll find three that will three loose forwards that will play really well together, and two midfield backs that will play well together. So my midfield backs, by the way, would be Harvili, Barrett, yes, Barrett, um, Geordie Barrett, Awani, and Goodhue. Those would be my four. And if Leonard Brown comes back from injury, he'll throw the cat amongst the pigeons. But I think if the All Blacks picked those players and kept them all together, you'd see us in the final.